here yesterday, all the way there. Bye. Thank you. Is your microphone on? Yes, I think so. Oh, yes. Yeah. Makes me sound like God. So what all we're really doing here today is illuminating the way in which uh, the apparent individual seems to take form at a very early age. The sense of self-awareness seems to arise in the tiny child and thereafter what arises is a sense of individuality which is purely dualistic. The individual energy doesn't enter something called dualism. The, the individual is dualistic, is dualism. It can only exist in the experience of dualism. That's how it exists and grows up and comes to believe that the world is dualistic. And then it also learns how to, to deal with that dualistic world in different ways. Um, and then later on, what we're, what we're also talking about is what seems to happen to some people is that that feeling of being in a dualistic world, that separate feeling of that feeling of separation, brings a sense of loss. There seems to be something unfulfilling about living in that dualistic experience, and so there's a seeking for some sort of fulfilment, some some answer to this sense of dissatisfaction and loss. And, and that seeker will try different ways of trying to find fulfillment because of course the individual has learnt um, or come to believe that um, it has to come to know things in order to succeed in the world. And so it also believes it has to come to know um, how to become fulfilled. It has to use it, what it believes is its own free will and choice and teachings from other people to find an, ob an object called fulfillment. So what we're doing, what we're doing today is sharing um, the possibility that that whole structure and that whole idea that there's something called fulfillment, an object that can be attained or that the individual can become worthy of is completely and utterly illusory. Of course, to most people, the sense of being an individual in, a, in this, in this uh, dualistic world is completely normal. They see that as the way that actually is. But this, this radical message challenges the whole um, accepted belief about society and the nature of the individual. And then the other thing that can arise is, uh, is an, an exposure of, of the sense that any seeking, any sort of process which is a promise of leading to somewhere called fulfillment is also wonderfully and utterly futile. What is sought, what is longed for can't be obtained. What is longed for has never been lost. What is longed for is all there is already. Already, everything that is, is what is longed for. The difficulty for the seeker is that the seeker is trying to know what is longed for. And what is longed for can't be known. It's unknowable. So, in a sense, there's nothing here uh, that will help the seeker at all. There's nothing in this meeting that will help the seeker because it's recognised the seeker is illusory so it's also recognised that you can't help an illusion. So that the difference with this sort of meeting is it's radically different to any sort of teaching. It offers no help at all. All it does is illuminate.
apparently. A very important word, apparently. The me seems to have uh, a tendency to hide and not to, to avoid exposure. Uh, avoid. To exposure. To avoid yeah. to, to, yeah, to be illuminated. Yeah. Is that because it feels not good enough and is afraid to be seen? Or is it also because it somehow <laughs> feels that it's illusory and wants to avoid this yeah, recognition? Well, it's, flat. It's, it's afraid of dying. Yes. So when it hears this message, um, it, it hides from it, or what it will do is rationalize it in some way or other, change what's being heard into what me wants to hear. Mm. There's all sorts of, me, is, me, the self with the eye, is very clever at avoiding any um, possibility of its own absence, and that's what this is about, really. It's, about the, it's not about gaining anything, it's about losing an imaginary identity in a sense. So the me somehow has a sense of that and runs as fast as it can or changes what's being heard into some other message. I mean a lot of people, it's very interesting, a lot of people think that this message is the same as a teacher's message like people who teach self-inquiry or meditation or that. Some people th believe they're both the same message and actually they're not in any way the same message. It's like two different languages really. But, but it's amazing how the self that listens to this can change it into what it wants to hear. Because it's frightened of this. It doesn't like this at all. Yes, but, but being afraid uh, before an, an exam or a job interview or anything like that, is that also a fear of death? Because it's a situation well, I think that's more to do with self-esteem. Although, yes. actually, invariably, most me's or selves have low self-esteem. They try to build it up by doing things and being successful. I think this is, this is more, has more depth than that. This is about life or death, in Here. a sense. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's, yes. about, it's about that. It's, yes. the end of, it's the end of um, a whole apparent life. It's about the end of, a, of an apparent life. Yes. It is about dying. When the exams aren't quite as serious as that. Yes, but the self-esteem also has to do with the separation. So yeah, the, the, yeah. the source is the same, but here it's more existential, or it's m more it existential here. I mean, separation causes fear here, but also in a situation <coughs> like a job interview, right? Yeah, that's as well. But that, the, the shop interview or an exam is more to do with succeeding in a particular task in order to feel better about yourself. Yes. This, this is also related to that, of course, but this isn't just challenging the, the values that the me has, or, um, and it's also not, in, in a sense, it's not threatening the, uh, the ego of the me, because it sees the ego of the me and me as the beloved. Mm. Of course, the beloved here is oneness in the form of a separate energy or separation. So in that sense, it's not threatening that more superficial part of me, it's threatening the whole existence mm. of me. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing matters. Nothing's happening. So. Is there something else there? Or is that all right? <laughs> mm. I don't know yet. <laughs> You're allowed, there isn't a, it isn't a question of being allowed, you can do anything you like. That's very kind. <laughs> um, given, given or accepting everything you've said so Bit far, accepting everything you've said so far, uh, at least apparently, um, is it 
and this concept of nothing happening, uh, can you illuminate a little bit more on that? Because essentially what you presume you're saying is in the absence of self, there is no perception of individual events, or is it different to that? Um, well, the, 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 the sense that there is nothing happening, or the suggestion that there's nothing happening, goes right to the deep mystery of what we're talking about here. It's incomprehensible. But uh, all the time, well, let's go around the other way, all the time there's a self who's in a story, it's my story, then there always seems to be something happening in that story, in simple terms. I'm hap this is happening to me now, I'm aware of this happening, and then I'm aware of that happening, and then... Um, when that whole energy of movement suddenly collapses, which you could call, for want of a better word, liberation from that uh, separate imprisonment, when that collapses, it's absolutely obvious to no one that nothing is happening. That's the sort of wow. Well, suddenly, this, is, this whole thing that seems to be happening isn't isn't, is only an appearance of no thing. So um, the whole sense that everything is empty is absolutely obvious. Um, but it can't be known. There isn't anything that knows there's only emptiness and fullness, but empty fullness. But, but, but it absolutely is obvious. That is the, the illumination in a way. The illumination of liberation is that there's nothing happening. That this Appearance is no thing appearing. That ev there is no such thing as anything that's real. No. Everything is real and unreal. There's no sense of time. There's no sense no. of time. No. No sense Intention, of journey, time, or future. Change or no, none at all. Nothing's happening. Mm. Because it is itself essentially already. No, it's not itself. There's nothing. No thing happening. So, um, after the, this collapsing, there's still this apparent Tony Parsons here who's Well, speaking. There's, a, there's a body here that people would call Tony Parsons, but there isn't actually an individual here. There's no sense of right. self, uh, the I, there's no awareness, there's no consciousness, there just is what is. But it's no, there's nothing... It's not in particular here, it is that that's all there is. This is very, this is very difficult, well it's impossible to describe. So all that's left here is everything. That's a lot. <laughs> so in, in this, in, in apparent reality, in, in my apparent perception of apparent reality, there's, there's so much variation, there's so much nuance and variation in, in this in things oh, here, yeah. and so once that collapses oh. there is also so much nuance and variation more there's more <laughs> okay in a way the me is very limited because it's veiled from the whole from the everything it's veiled it only sees something uh -huh. it sees something in everything and there is nuance in the something but when that collapses it's all nuance it's all it's incredibly rich because there isn't anything seeing things as a something. There is only everything which can't be described. Uh huh. And so, when when so the apparent me or the apparent you still do these things like go to Berlin and give talks or something so All those is there yeah. is there a sense of um, of uh, performing in apparent reality for the sake of not, communicating not in, with not in, not in a personal way no there is performance that uh -huh. goes on no, nobody does this it just is what's happening and it has no agenda of any kind it has no uh, motivation or, or direction of any kind okay. it's just what's happening because it's coming out of nothing there isn't someone here with some held knowledge which is then going to be passed on as it would be in your teaching there is simply nothing here and when somebody asks a question there's a response that, but it, that response comes out of nothing mm -hmm. okay it's Thank emptiness you. responding in, in, in a sense it's emptiness responding to 
fullness, which is what it all there is. That's fullness. And in that, that there may be an idea that there's someone there as well. I don't know. Hello? I was wondering, um, so while the me thinks it exists, it'll keep trying to have a better life, right? It'll do things, like you said, to, to raise its self-esteem, to be successful. Uh, that's what it does. And I, I'm wondering whether these things that the me does to feel better about itself and be successful in life, do they actually reinforce the sense of self? Do they? Reinforce the sense of yeah, there absolutely. being a me. Yeah, absolutely. All the effort. Look, well, let's start from the beginning again. The me, the self, the I, just to be clear, this, um, think or believes that it is making a choice and an effort to make its life better. That's the first part of the dream. That's the first part of the illusion that I am doing it. And then if it, action apparently is taken and it makes the me feel better, then it then reinforces that I can make my life better. So that whole circle, that whole um, dualistic circle goes on uh, being reinforced and supported by that sort of... And also if a, if, a, if a me goes to a teacher and the teacher tells them to meditate or whatever and they feel better, that goes on reinforcing the dream me. There are many, many dream teachers who reinforce the whole sense of me and the whole idea of personal enlightenment. Absolutely. Yeah, there's a very popular teaching around um, um, your beliefs influencing reality that yeah, is perceived, belief, yeah. which I think is just the way this wheel of uh, reality ticks, like beliefs yeah. seem to be reflected in one's um, experience of life. Mm. And then there is the whole teaching around influencing your beliefs and, and making your thinking yeah. positive or mm. focusing only on what feels good. Yeah. That's, and, and many people actually seem to try to mix non-duality with that, which is very good. to... Try to mix non-duality yeah, with, yeah, oh, with yeah. personal empowerment, yeah. what they call that, and I find that kind of confusing. Well, I mean, it's just ridiculous. You know, there are dozens, of, well, there are hundreds now, because it's more fashionable now, and also because there's something in the psyche that's more open to un unadulterated non-duality. Somewhere there's an energetic shift towards it, but in the, in the ordinary dream world, non-duality is, is, is used as a title for almost anything you like now. There's non-dual therapy, there's you know, non-dual, it's, it's just a ridiculous use of a word without any comprehension of what it really means. Mm. It's, it seems to be a fact though that beliefs, the way we think, influence how our experience and yeah. how happy we are. Yeah, the, the fact that the, but that isn't the fact is that you're doing it. Right. So but it can no happen. One who can there do can it, be no. that energy where you, where apparent action is taken and there's a feeling. Yeah. yeah. It's a game. It's oneness playing. It's all oneness playing a game of, oh, I'm, I'm me and I feel better already. It's yeah, and what's confusing is that actually for some people it seems to work. They yeah, actually absolutely. train... For um, a little, yeah, it works for a little while. <laughs> Underneath all of that, something that hasn't been dealt with and can't be dealt with by me is, the, is separation. So people go off and it's all... Way, 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 way. But underneath that is a feeling of separation and then that comes back and right. is overwhelming. <coughs> so to make I mean, there are people that you know, go to teachers and believe they've become enlightened. There's no mm -hmm. question about that as well. But, but it's only a short term, it's a very transient state. Mm. Because it's still a state that only arises in dualism. So in dualism there's always something happening. So just there I'm enlightened, or I feel better, or I'm richer, or she loves me now, or whatever you like. <laughs> in the and then just a little around there, it's, oh no, she doesn't love me, me or oh, I'm not enlightened, or whatever. And it's all a series of events which amount to absolutely nothing. It's a story told by a fool, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Um, I was talking with a friend last night who says he's, um, he's been in a training with a teacher, the training is called Awakening Intensive or something like that. Yeah, I know. So, 
<laughs> and um, um, so apparently this method, um, he, he was taught to, to coach this or to do this as well. This method can um, support the, the person, the receiver, to enter a space of con consciousness or non-duality of Conscious, uh, like a consciousness, consciousness yeah. like a very wide um, sense of limitlessness. Yeah, widening the consciousness. Yeah. So that seems to be like work within one session or something yeah. like that. So yeah. I was I was trying to figure out last night what is that and how does that relate to? It's, it's only the awareness and consciousness only happen in the story. Uh, me and me is held together by through awareness and consciousness, which are both words for knowing. I know I am is the basis of individuality. I know I am. I know the world is. I know you are. Da 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 da. And in some, there are some exercises which will expand that sense of awareness for a while and make you feel as though you are a kind of God, really, in a way, all-knowing. The whole basis of self-inquiry is to, is to know the known, which is like a God-like God experience of knowing everything. Because it's called self-realization. Yeah. It's the self-realizing that it knows everything. It's like a God-like experience. It's a state which comes and goes. Sounds pretty cool, though. Oh, no, it's cool. Yeah, you, there are lots of cool things out there. You can. <laughs> right. So you're saying that whether there is that expanded state of consciousness or a total contraction and mess is just the same. It's awesome. I have one last question. So where my initial question came from about the effort that the me does to improve its life, it's because it applies to my daily life, like yeah. work, should I change my job? Um, Absolutely. It's not, up, it's not fulfilling enough, and oh, same I'm, with relationships, it, nothing's fulfilling. Join the queue. Yeah. So all these efforts to make it more fulfilling, be it on the physical level or mm. life experience, it's all reinforcing the sense of so me? Of course. Yeah. Okay. And supporting the whole dream. It's the dream. Being reinforced. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's, it's not right or wrong. There's nothing wrong or right about it. It is one disappearing as that. It's emptiness appearing as fullness, and in that fullness arises the whole sense of an ego of a person who can improve their lives. It's what's apparently happening. That while the person thinks it exists and it anyway doesn't have a choice about when it disappears because or not, it might as well try to have a good life. Oh, there's no, uh, there's no question about that. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it's good if you can find the right method, and there are some that are better than others. There's no question. But uh, that has to happen. It's inevitable in the life of me that it will go on trying to feel better about itself. Mm. It'll try and find anything that will make it feel better. Because, you know, don't forget, initially, this is a bit like um, Adam and Eve. Initially, the, 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 there is only boundlessness. There is only, let's call it, a bit, it's a bit Christian, but there's only paradise. So the child is born uh, in a state of paradise, in a boundlessness. In the first year, it's cast out of that boundlessness, that paradise, Adam and Eve again, by coming to know itself. So actually the knowing of itself, self-awareness self, um, arises, then there's, and it's cast out of paradise. Directly it's cast out of paradise, it feels totally bereft and, and rejected. So the me starts off with very low self-esteem at a very early age. It won't recognize that, obviously, but emotionally, there's a sense of self, low self-esteem. So what we see in the world are people trying to um, respond to that feeling of low self-esteem by trying to make their lives work. Yeah. That's what we're seeing in the world. And what we're also seeing in the world is that that constant effort to make your life work is, it can only lead to uh, frustration. And then when it leads to frustration, because what you're looking for is beyond you, um, when it leads to that frustration, then tremendous anger can grow. What we're watching in the world is, is that happening. The world is becoming angrier and angrier. And it's like the individual seeker never being able to find satisfaction. Mm. It's, it's, it's totally futile. And the seeker, the me, the I, is utterly and completely helpless.
But it goes on trying. So, oh yeah, Mark, Mark. Hi, Tony. So, uh, <clears throat> the knee, let's say, disappears. Uh, there's a body that continues to function, a brain with its function. Mm. Does that brain and that body keep functioning within the story, even though there's no me, or that whole thing completely collapses? The brain functions in the story, regardless of whether there's a me or not. But the story is only an appearance, of course. Right. But the brain uh, reacts or responds to what it assimilates as is, as is what is happening. And it, uh, there doesn't have to be a sense of self, which of course is a construct of the brain. That doesn't have to be there. It can be there and it may not be. So in other words, we could say the brain and the body continues to function within a context of duality, in a way, even yeah. though there is no sense of me. Yeah. And the tendencies keep happening, like the tendency of day following night, trees yeah. following the light. Yeah. Those tendencies just keep happening. Yeah, they're only it's apparently happening, okay. and there's an apparent response. Mm -hmm. But the, the one thing that you can add to that then is that the me, or the self, or the I, see all that response and what's happening though as real. I am real, the world is real, the story is real, da da da. And that's the, one, the only one illusion there is. The illusion of the me or the self that, every, that I am real and the world is real and what's happening in the world is real. So could we also say that the function, the me, it's a function of the brain as well? Yeah, oh, totally, it absolutely. Just it's a function of the brain. Stops functioning yeah. and then there's yeah. no sense of me, yeah. but the rest keeps happening. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a function. It's a, it's, a, it's a construct of the brain, and the brain constructs it for its own use, to somehow strengthen its own wish to manipulate or dominate what it sees as a separate world. Doing quite well at the moment. It's sort of dominating the world and completely fucking it up as well, both at the same time. <laughs> And then, and then the me has the most amazing arrogance to say, oh, the world is really damaged by what man has done to it, so now we're going to save it. <laughs> it's a lovely game. Any else short thing before I send it to you? <laughs> I'm just curious. There is, I haven't read it, but you, you are a reader. Have you read the um, book? Reading happens. Yeah, reading happens. Uh, there is a book, I think the title is The Man Who Mistook, Who, who Confused His Wife with a Hat. Oh, no, I don't know that you, one. You it sounds wonderful. Yeah, so. I missed that. Is it good? Have you read it? No, I haven't, but I oh. was thinking maybe you had and no, you could recommend lovely. it. No, it's I like oh, yeah. that. <laughs> Hello, um, so a question sort of uh, links up to what he was suggesting or asking is that uh, so after the collapse, say the collapse of the eye, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of let's say everybody, um, war might still oh, yeah. happen, yeah, absolutely, it can, yeah. but only apparently, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just it just happens, takes place, and shoot guns and stuff. And yeah. I mean, you know, the th yeah. Before man ever entered or stepped onto the earth, well, although he was already walking around it, but then the brain became sophisticated enough to abstract the sense of me. But before that ever happened, there was war. You know, the, the story uh, in, in, on the earth is apparently dualistic. So there are apparently polarities, and inevitably there, there would be war. Inevitably? 
inevitable. Well, yeah, because there are polarities. You know, uh, in the apparent, in the appearance of the world, it is dualistic. Therefore, there's right and wrong, and, and better and worse. And one person's idea of right would not be another person's idea of wrong, so there'd be war. Okay, but it's also at the same time it's a possibility that fedding up with war might ha happen. There's, as well. there's possibility of anything. Yeah, yeah. okay. Right. Um, because you said it happens because one person is holding on to one position and the other person... Well, that's a, a more sophisticated way that war happens. <laughs> what, what if there are no persons anymore? If no oh, but, the, but, but, but the person that thinks they're right is in the dream of being a real person who thinks that what they believe is right. And the other person over here is in another dream believing that their belief of what is right is, is real. But don't forget that the one thing that people don't hear or don't listen to or don't realise is that, that people think they are real yeah. and they think that their beliefs about life are also real and they also um, could then take arms against somebody else who believes some, directly the opposite is real. So there's, in that world there's apparent polarity and then you get Aggression and war. Right, so that's how war and conflict happen at the moment. In a, in, in, yeah, in, the in, in a very simplistic way, yes. Yeah. But I, I thought he asked what happens when, like, if everybody, if there were no, if, if there was a collective collapse of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, if, um, if there was. It's a nice a, idea, but. but I, there, there wouldn't be war no, anymore, no, right? But it's, but it's a possibility. But there is still also war with animals. Animals have wars. That's right, yeah. Although there's no sense of me there, there's still a, um, a, there are still, in a way, uh, hierarchies of survival. So yeah. you know, one animal will attack another one in order to survive. So that, that energy is there. But, but the hypothetical theory, which incidentally is based on a complete um, misnomer, that, that, that all, all people suddenly uh, are liberated <laughs> and then there wouldn't be war is ridiculous because there isn't anybody to be liberated. <laughs> Me always wants to hope for a better world. Right? Are all animals... There's nothing wrong with war. War is what is. Yeah. You know, the idea that suddenly war is, must be done away with it. War is what is. And, and the me is, is constantly at war with itself, of course, because yeah. it's schizophrenic. Just another question popped up. Are all animals free of this identification? And there isn't anything else other than a human being that has any sense of being an individual, that has any sense of separation at all. So, my mom's cat is very neurotic. No, very <laughs> yeah. They, uh, your cats, we've got a cat that is quite, he's not very neurotic. Not as neurotic as it's yours. He's very jealous <laughs> and he's attacked. But, but yeah, they do gather neurosis and they seem to behave in a human way. But what they do is without any choice or reference. Okay. <laughs> when, when animals do, if ever animals brains sophisticated enough for them to have a sense of a separate being, then they'll start their own religions. <laughs> That's what religion is about. I have a question about these um, pure consciousness teachings and exercises. Oh. Um, 
Is, isn't pure consciousness the purest experience <gasps> of separation? Oui, it's so sweet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's about bloody purity, isn't it? But anyway, yeah. Yes, but isn't, isn't pure consciousness the purest experience of separation? It is believed by the individual that it is, yeah. Yeah, but how mm. can it be, yeah, but how can it be comfortable for so many people if it's the, the purest a state of separation or experience of separation because there's no distraction, no identification. But it doesn't last long, don't worry about it. No, I, I don't find it comfortable. I wonder why so many people find it comfortable. Because it's what they aspire to. I mean, they aspire to that and, and if they think they reach that then they feel very um, pleased about that. But the only problem with that is it only usually lasts around about three minutes. <laughs> but it's, it's actually... Um, self-realization in a sense because you because you can through um, awareness or self-inquiry or whatever or meditation reach a state of self-realization I did when I was in the Osho thing we did a very intense thing to do with that and you can reach a peak of knowingness where you you You, you, it's, a, it's, it's such a detachment that it's as though there is no one there. It's like a detachment that's very um, knowing. It knows everything. It's, it looks down on people. It's certainly down, not up. It looks down on people and knows them and knows the world. It seems to have a, an energy of its own, which is very much to do with being detached. And it's nice for a little while. But it yep. can only be for a little while because it's still a state in the whole. Yeah, I, I don't understand why the it, it's the expansion of the me, right? Oh, I'm, no, no yes. question. It's yes. absolutely a, a glorification yes. of me. But how can that be comfortable to Oh, it's to great fun. It's, it's wonderful me. to be all knowing, all knowing me. <laughs> you know, it's just wonderful. It's gorgeous. But You're even detached from women for a little while. <laughs> But you know, it's sort of, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a state, which is yes. very exciting. Which well, not exciting, but it's very powerful. It's a very male. Men are very attracted to the idea of being all knowing. Yeah, but shouldn't shouldn't be completely um, um, distracted be more comfortable comfortable because then the me would be hidden or the. What would be more comfortable? To be completely distracted, because then the... Distracted. Distracted to... or identified, because then the experience of me would be covered or um, hidden. Would it? I don't know. I don't know. But the me is also hidden in this state, too. Me is totally hidden, because you are God. Ah. So how can you be me? You know, you do feel mm. godlike. So the feeling of being a little me in the world is hidden under that. Mm. You walk around and... <laughs> sweet, totally sweet. You see, I mean, if you had ever been in the Osho movement, or any of those, but certainly there, there were lots of people with very long beards that walked around. <laughs> yeah, all sort of, Yeah, with orange mini O shows, you know. It was it's the Mies idea of what enlightenment should look like. <laughs> Sweet. The thing, the thing that me or the self or the I is most is very frightened of is unknowing. So uh, all those sort of processes lead to a sort of supreme personal knowing, which protects them from the thing they're most frightened of, and that is unknowing. If there's unknowing, where am I anymore? You know, where is me? Where is me in that? It's a sort of. It's like. It's like. There's unknowing, but the me is so fine of that that it goes right to the other end of all to all knowing.
in what sense all knowing? So in in what sense all knowing? No, knowing what? Knowing everything. Well, no, well, thinking that you know everything, that you have a knowing of people and the floor and the trees, that you know it. You're somehow sitting, knowing everything, having know it, having knowledge of it, being aware, being intensely aware of everything. Conscious. Consciousness, awareness and knowing are the same thing really. Consciousness has been elevated a bit because it's the, it's the new word for God. All there is is consciousness. I thought knowing would be sort of information, knowledge, knowing knowledge. Just no, it's not so much that. having a lot of information, it's somehow above that even. But to some probably. Right? It's probably a, an interpretation as well, or, or you can have your own definition of that word, I guess, no? I didn't hear that. I, sp I suppose you could have your own definition of that word, of, of um, knowing. Well, the brain knows where London is, but that's not the same thing, that's just information. Whereas this is standing above and seeing what is, I can't describe it. Very nice. I once heard someone express it in a way, and it's it's all mine. Yeah, it's all mine. Yeah, that's another good word. It's godlike. It's all mine. Yeah. So, but it's very confusing because it, because it looks like the me can um, develop some skills no, I've in, certain, uh, in, in way of with, with, uh, with the exercises with or show. Absolutely. And, and, and uh, self-inquiry more than dancing that is... Yeah, but, but also knowing yeah. your... Um, <laughs> you do some uh, physical exercises and yeah. then you have your neighbor and on a, on a note you can write something. Yeah. That has to do with a neighbor and then... Yeah. It's, it's exactly the energy when a neighbor is in. And so yeah. I, I did a lot of aura reading that's and that right, kind yeah. of thing. But it's also knowing, eh? it's the me. It, it's still the separate world of the that's story. Right. Absolutely, completely. That's why I'm totally confused and I, I cannot do anything with this energy that I learned about. No, you can't because you're still in the third. Yes. I mean, enlightenment intensives are another process. Have you ever done those where you sit with somebody and say, who am I? And they say, who am I? Okay. And then it goes, it's got the 25 or 30 questions which you go through for days. We did it all. And the first one is, who am I? And you talk to somebody about who you are. And you sort of, un, sort of onion layers fall off. But there's only in the end an intense understanding of who you are. It's, but it's very um, in, enlightening or, or sort of uplifting. Yes. And then who are you? Who is another? And da 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 da. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's all really there and created for the glorification of me. I mean, all of that work is really about personal enlightenment. It's about, you know, the offer of the teacher is, or the promise of the teacher is, personal enlightenment. And actually, if you look at the Buddhist forms of, of enlightenment, all seven of them, they all end up as being a personal enlightenment. Even the system of, of meditating and, and somehow um, losing the me, there is a Buddhist process of losing the me, is still in the end knowing there's no me. So it's still, 
It's still in the end, the me knowing there's no me. It's, like, it's, like, it's about like the lower and higher self. When we grow up, we, we learn to develop a higher and lower self. And so the, all these teachings speak to the higher self as though there's a lower self that they now don't know. Name the lower self. So, or, or, or they just no, dismiss it. They, they, they hate it or they dismiss it. It's better to dismiss it. If you hate it, you still have some sort of emotion. <laughs> Be completely detached from it is... <laughs> great. For a little while. Buddhism and reincarnation, um, reincarnation is part of the story. It's a, it's, it inevitably is, because reincarnation is about something that happens in time. There isn't any. And there isn't anyone. Well, the me wants to continue, so it creates something called reincarnation. It also creates something called karma, which is also another way of feeling that there definitely is a path and you definitely have chosen to act in a certain way, which then influences what happens to you later on. You know, me essentially is absolutely invested in story, because it is story. It is an inner story, me is story. No, you can't help being. Story. No, you can't help it. You can't kill yourself. You have to live your story. Totally. Totally. Yeah, you are. You are a dualistic story. So there's nothing you can do about it because that's your nature. And the whole idea of seeking is actually to escape yourself. You are dualism, yeah. and seekers are trying to escape themselves. They're trying to escape dualism. They can't because they are it. It's a completely hopeless task. So, yes. Um, speaking, uh, talk, talking about this hopelessness and... About? Hopelessness yeah. and about trying to, to escape. And I was just wondering, like, um, yeah, about suicide, you know. Yeah, and but who's going to choose to commit suicide? Yeah, I know. And there, I, I had this, like, these thoughts. Like, it seems like it's the me who who wants to escape, but actually tries to put on the guilt on something else, like on the body. Yeah, on the on the on the body. Body, yeah, yeah. On yeah. the body. Okay. And self damaging or yes, or yes, yeah, absolutely. And yeah, okay, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 
I was wondering, is the me actually able to experience emptiness? Uh, experience. Is, is me able to experience emptiness? Uh, of course not, no. Um, really the me doesn't experience anything. There is no me. It's an illusion. But it, it seems to... Um, what seems to happen energetically is that it gets, has a sense that it is real and so what happens, it then thinks it's, it is experiencing. But it can only experience what seems to be happening, what, what is moving. For like feelings and thoughts and action and so on. And it believes or lives in, in the belief that it, it is an experiencer and those things are happening to it. Um, uh, emptiness can't be experienced because it is, it is no thing, it is emptiness and it can't be described or known, so it can't be experienced. This is, is, it the off, is it such an on-off switch? I mean, for example, when you're talking about Tony Parsons... Sorry? You talk, when you're talking about Tony Parsons... Sorry. Tony Parsons. Tony Parsons. The, the, the self that was, at some point there was a... Apparent. Falling away. There deep, was an apparent self. There was an yeah. apparent self that then and there was a falling away of that apparent uh, But self. only apparent. Apparently. Yeah. At that point, does it completely disappear? Does it never return, that sense of well, it apparent doesn't, self? It, it doesn't disappear because it was never there. <coughs> that's the, that's is the, the illusion, paradox. Is there a tendency for the illusion to want to re-apparently appear? Not at all. Because Not at all. It, no, because the realization is absolute. There's nothing left, exactly. so everything is complete. So there's not a there's not a times of transition between the two. No, it's, right. it is or it isn't. So it is an on-off switch. Yeah. Once done, done. And obviously, because it, there's only emptiness, everything is complete. So there wouldn't be any sense of wanting something. There is no longer any yeah. need. It's, it's the end of need. It's the So, are you okay with that? Yes, thank you. you, <laughs> well, you know, there is only unknowing and it can't be experienced because if it was experienced, the experiencer would, would be that which would know something and it can't know emptiness. It can only know something that seems to be happening. It can only know or experience a something and there aren't any somethings except in the dream. So, would you then say that while the me is not able to experience in any way anything or in any way for sure not emptiness, that the human body is actually a part of emptiness? No, the human body, well, it, it's not part of emptiness. The human body is emptiness body. So, it isn't emptiness in some sort of dark cave or up in a purple sky coming down and being the body, the body is emptiness. This is where we're back into the great mystery. There aren't two, there's not two. The body is emptiness. We're not talking about me now, of course. Me experiences the body as its own. Me takes ownership of it. This is my body. There isn't a mind, there isn't anyone. In, in, in the natural reality, the, the body is emptiness, the wall is emptiness. Emptiness is walling, emptiness is flowing. And is emptiness also meing? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Can't be any other way. Me or being? Me. Meing. Um, emptiness is meing, emptiness is selfing, emptiness is eyeing, emptiness is seeking, but only apparently. That's the killer. Uh, you said um, um, there's an, it's either on or off. Sorry? It's either on or off. What is? Well, was, no, there's only emptiness. It's not on or off. There's only emptiness. Yeah. But he, he, he was, I think that uh, your man at the back, he mentioned something about transitional transition or something and then you say well it's either on or off or it's, it's just well, uh, well it, there is only emptiness but within emptiness can appear that which is a something a something which is the me 
but it's only an appearance, it's not real. It's like everything else, it's, it is real and unreal. The experience of separation is real and unreal, like everything else. Yeah, and uh, what I wanted to, the word that came to me, I was thinking of was, was glimpses. That's oh, well, that's sometimes used, thing, uh, referred me to. Me can be walking along or whatever. Me can be walking along and suddenly isn't. There is just emptiness. Then, there is, then it also seems that the me can walk out of the other side, apparently, and, and have some sense that something colossal has just happened. Yeah. They can't remember it because it wasn't there. But, but it, it, when me sort of comes back, so to speak, it does sort of um, try to describe, maybe, or it tries to oh, yeah, kind of it tries go, oh, to, oh, that was... And it tries that to was own that or, or find that again. In a way, a glimpse is like a curse for the me, because that, it, there's nothing else like that. And so uh, thereafter, nothing else in the world is ever good enough, in a sense. Because already, in a, in, um, light has entered the darkness of separation, and the darkness of separation is not as dark as it was. So that then there can be more glimpses and more glimpses, and then so there can be a dancing of being and being, being and being. And suddenly, there's just being. A glimpse then is is kind of on. Yes. <laughs> it's kind of on. It's like it's like the on switch. Well, that's what I was thinking when he was saying on and off. No, like no. Off is kind of me, on and on is kind of a glimpse. With it's not memory. on and off. Me is. Yeah. Me is there and not there. there <laughs> no. But it's all of that in absolute emptiness. You could say in a way that liberation isn't something that happens, there just is liberation. And what arises is that you get in the way of it <laughs> by trying to find it. And what is the implication? Well, everything is, you're sitting on it. <laughs> You're sitting on it, breathing it, hearing it, feeling it, smelling it, whatever you're touching it. It's this. There is only this. So whatever you do right now, or anybody else in this room, whatever you do is this. But the problem for the seeker is that they uh, keep that away by being aware of it. In other words, you're sitting on it, so you are aware of sitting on the seat, and that's what keeps what is, which is the happening of sitting on the seat, away from you. You, keep, you create a distance from what is by being aware of it. And when people hear this, they then, they sort of, Oh well, I won't be aware of it anymore, there's just... No. <laughs> well, that's fine, that's fine, why not? <laughs> no, it still... Hasn't happened yet. <laughs> oh, see! Because there's something still that knows. <laughs> I used to do that a lot. <laughs> and being in the now, you know. I am being in the now. Oh, what crap. <laughs> Sweet. No. 
um, it seems that I found, uh, want to find a question uh, which uh, makes an end to the I. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's completely uh, senseless, isn't it? It's really, I, I absolutely hear what you say, but there is no answer. The question requires an answer, and the, and the answer is that there isn't an answer. Isn't, uh, can, can it, can't it be that uh, there is a, um, a question which... No, uh, no because... No. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, this is about energy more, you know, uh, um, if you like. Uh, the, 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 oh. the sudden uh, falling away of that which was never happening is, is, is a, if you like, as, as near as you can get it, the apparent dropping away of apparently contracted energy. So there is no and need? Then, there's no need to ask questions? Well, no, none at all. Not? Oh, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. The only, the only thing about asking questions and getting an answer that which you won't necessarily like <laughs> is that, is that it, all it can do is undress the illusion a bit. It, it, the illusion that you are real, yeah. you know, in it, conversations like this can, can unravel the illusion that you are real and that life is real and that you can find what you're looking for. That can unravel with this sort of talk. But the most powerful, or the most liberating thing that's going on in this room is absolutely beyond words. Sounds very good. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there isn't really a shift, but you can call it that if you want. Apparently, uh, hello, hello. Apparently, energetic, energetic shift has, has nothing to do with with the body. No, it hasn't got anything to do with anything. No, not what the individual no. is like or they aren't like. No. Got nothing to do with anything. No. It doesn't actually happen, of course. It's okay, not. but apparently. It's yeah. It's just energy. Yeah, because what we're doing here is we're talking about a story. Yeah. We're talking a story together about something that isn't a story. Yeah, yeah. And that's in a way that's the only communication we can yeah. share. Yeah. And that's confusing. It can be. Yeah. It's very paradoxical. This. And and but, and that's also the energetical. That is, well, it's all energy. It, words are energy. There's nothing wrong with words or stories. They're just energy in that form. But the only, yeah, but the only you, thing about that I could say is that there is a, an apparent limitation to that, to stories or words. Oh, yeah. It's energy. It's, it's oneness. It has a sort of limitation because it describes something and this is not about anything. Yeah. <laughs> Get me to. <laughs> <laughs> but what is it? What feels beyond? If you say it's a story, it's. You well, we talk in story, yeah. don't we? We're, we're talking. But you say something, and then I feel some beyond oh, that's, energy. That, that can be something, and that's the something else. But it's not me saying it. No. I'm not saying anything. No. Nothing is. You know, in a way, you could say, let's say, if you don't mind me saying, there's something there that thinks it's something and it asks nothing or it says to nothing, I'm something. And nothing says there isn't any something. Right. And, and those are words, but something else energetic can happen in that interplay. Yeah. I am something, in a sort of way, has a, you could say, is. There's contraction here, is, is in that. I am something, so there is contraction, let's say. And then, the, then nothing says, no, there's nothing. And that, that contraction, ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ooh. <laughs> and 
that is like an energetical shift. Uh, so it is like one, yes. It is like but when, when you die, you'll, you can ring me up and tell me it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> People do. Hi, and uh, how do you see that uh, these days uh, science seemingly uh, is discovering many things uh, in many ways, the things you're talking about? Yeah, it is. Everything comes it, out of nothing and so forth. Yeah, and the neuroscientists discoveries that have been made and physicists are making, but they are, uh, neuroscientists and physicists are still talking about it as though it's a story. Um, I, I understand there are some um, physicists more than neuroscientists who are also talking about this the possibility of this but that's very rare most of them are talking about it in a story like they still talk about uh, the big bang or the beginning of creation as though they believe it's real mm. it's absolutely amazing that they do but they do so they're, they're talking about the whole thing in terms of a story there is some science, the whole story. Sorry? Well, science. yes it is, but, the, but, but in some way or other the scientists themselves do not seem open to that which is beyond the story. That's what, you know. But, but, but apparently there are, there are some that are. A couple of Japanese physicists are talking about something that's absolutely beyond the story. And but the possibility that there's no such thing as a Big Bang. No, but also uh, in, for instance, medical research, like the, the, uh, discovering something about how, how people, how doctors and professionals meet their patients if they do it without any intention or without any, yeah. um, like, you know, from e basically from yeah. emptiness, it's, uh, it has a curing effect. Uh, there's no question that if somebody walks into a room to talk to somebody, let's be dramatic, who's just dying of cancer, if somebody, if, there, if nobody walks into a room, there isn't that projection onto that person that they're ill. There isn't, because there isn't anyone there. That's amazing. That's incredible. Because everybody else that walks into the room has the projection of that person that they are ill. And, put, and that energy, that energy is shared. <coughs> but when, when I look at things like that, I, I could be tempted to think there's a kind of an evolution towards what well, you're talking there is about. A, there is apparent evolution, unfortunately. I mean, you know, the, the beginning of the, of the brain being coming sophisticated enough to create the sense of a separate individual is part of apparent evolution but it's all totally meaningless. And that's the key, you're talking about an emptiness that has no sense of agency. Yeah. There's no cause for illness. Well, there's an apparent cause and effect in the apparent story, but none of that is real. It's only an appearance. You know, cause and effect is another appearance. And so an illness that arises apparently from cause and effect is also only an appearance. There isn't, let's go another way. There isn't anything that's real. So there's no way to know this. No. And nothing changes. Nothing. Nothing changes. No. There's nothing happening.
Um, I have a question also about neuroscience. Um, about neuroscience. Oh yeah. And the research around brain waves, yeah. like you know, the agitated me state would be the beta brain wave, and then the slower ones, and apparently deep sleep where the me isn't present would yeah. be the delta or something like that. Yeah. Um, and then I was just thinking about that in relation to meditation, for instance, where it trains, it mm. can train slowing down the brain mm. waves. Mm to the point where there is no thought, yeah, for instance. Uh, maybe, yeah, I don't know that, yeah, but probably. So, yeah. I was wondering whether that very slow brainwave, where there aren't actually thoughts happening, how that relates to liberation, because there isn't actually an awareness of me in that, in that sense. Uh, yeah, uh, but it apparently logically seems to relate, but it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that it's another state of thoughtlessness. Yeah, and it also, last. let's be clear about something. There isn't anybody that can choose to meditate anyway. But, yeah. but coming down to that level is just another state that's been found by me. And there isn't any benefit to that? There's no benefit to anything, especially <laughs> liberation. <laughs> it's the worst thing that can happen to a person. <laughs> I mean, it is the worst thing that can happen to a person. Yeah. Um, to, the, to the person, it would seem that being in those slower brain waves feels yeah. much better because yeah, it's less Yeah, they feel agitated. better for a while. I've done that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> no, it is. And they, even I've done the thing where they have um, things on your head and yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing, incidentally, is a matter of interest that <coughs> neuroscientists have more recently discovered is, or established for themselves, is that awareness is the function that keeps the me functioning. Awareness keeps, is the feeder of separation. Praying. Up. I know it's stupid. No, well, it isn't stupid. It's what it is, but it's, it's usually. Like a, see, to me, who wants to pray? Mm. But for me, inevitably, praying has a, has an intention of communicating with something else. For me, prayer, prayer, it's a communication with. With what? With something like with God. Some, some uh, fairy tale. <laughs> Yeah, in some way, or other, a sort of God, or because prayer really is um, is a, is a supplication. Sure, it's a sort of communication, isn't it? Really? You're yeah. speaking to someone, yeah. Yeah. To or you're speaking to yourself, to, yourself. Yeah. to your higher self, or whatever. So it's, it's it's very dualistic uh, yeah, expression. For me, yeah, for yeah for absolutely. Me. Hope. And it's often something to do with doing deals, isn't it? I used to, I was in the Christian, I, my first experience of seeking was Christian. I had a feeling that Jesus was saying something that, you know, so I also prayed, but, it, but most of my prayers were sort of deals, really. I was a businessman, you know, Tony Parsons was in business when he left school, in disgrace, by the way. In this case. Yeah, I, yeah, I was not very good at school. The only thing I ever got stars for in school was recreation. Do you know what recreation is? Yeah. Playing. Playing. <laughs> so I was. There was a. There was a business thing there. So I used to do deals with God. None of them ever worked. <laughs> Okay, I'm stuck on, on this word awareness now and the way okay. you see it. Awareness is knowing as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I, I, I just don't get it. Like, um, when you hear sounds, 
When, when, when you uh, this, I don't this hear a sound. Here, something here sounds. No. What is it that hears? There is a hearing that functions. There is other oh, senses that function in this body, but there isn't anything that hears a sound. There just is sound. One, one of the, the problems, really, in a way, in being in the story is that somehow the senses are a communication to someone, like hearing. Let's stay with hearing. So there is a sound, and the function of hearing mechanically uh, uh, takes that on board, and the brain, uh, uh, the brain, accepts that hearing, heard sound. But there, but and all the time there's a me there. Then the me, wherever it is, or it's over the whole body, will then um, experience hearing a sound. It will then take ownership of that sound. I have heard a sound. When there's no me, there just is sound. And the mechanics of that sound still function, but there is nothing, um, there is no center, there is nothing else but that sound. Are you familiar with Rupert Spira? I, yes, I am, very. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I can see from your expression what your take is on him. <laughs> <laughs> so, the way he expresses it is that everything is awareness, that the sound oh, yeah, is uh, happening, uh, he, that everything is a self-aware field yeah. of consciousness. I know all that. Yeah. Without there being an identity. Absolutely, there right. just is awareness. There doesn't have to be anyone, there's just awareness. So, yeah. I think he uses awareness as a word for emptiness, because he uses yeah. them interchangeably. He does. Um, that's why I'm confused about the word. No, it's not. It can be easily be confused if you think that a function can be everything. The difficulty, or well, well, as far as this is concerned, the whole um, misconception of that message is is the misconception about the nature of awareness. Awareness is a moving function. To know is a movement. It's a function within the whole. It's not the whole. So his idea that there is only awareness, and of course he goes further with that as he does with lots of things. There is awareness of awareness, and there's also awareness of awareness of awareness as well. But all of that is based on the misconception, as far as I'm concerned, that he's talking about moving parts. Awareness is a function. For awareness to function, it needs something to be aware of. Mm. It needs something else, even if that something else is awareness. And that's where the whole thing, as far as I understand, completely collapses back into the wheel. What he what he he is about for me he is a teacher very much like to do with what I was describing before self realization mm -hmm. or the knowing of everything the knowing of everything is a function there is no function because nothing is happening yeah it, it gets very confusing because he yeah, says that be, as well that nothing sounds is wonderful. happening and it sounds um, amazing wonderful. Yeah. That's right, there's nothing wrong with that. Very complicated. Very deeply complicated. Spira is amazing. I've watched Spira quite a lot. He seems um, brilliant. It, and everything he says is deeply complex. <laughs> and it's, for me, as far as I'm concerned, it's like, a, it's like a spiritual dream. It's a great spiritual dream. And apparently, about what he also said, I mean, lots of things he says, he, if you want to follow that message, there are three things you need to follow it. Courage, honesty, and humility. I mean, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> you know, could you have anything more religious or Christian than that? I, and then I the other thing, the other amazing thing he says is that God needs you to know that I'm sitting here. Without you, God doesn't know that I'm sitting here. I mean, it's unbelievable crap. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I shouldn't. No, I, I, have, I haven't come across that crap yet. <laughs> so it keeps a lot of people amused for a while. Or not amused, but very involved. 
Anybody that can follow that stuff? <laughs> can somebody go and ask if tea's ready? <laughs> As it for for you um, after the collapse, so to speak, apparent collapse. The apparent collapse. Has that uh, has that not brought any very s changes? Like maybe I don't know, any changes in in, in um, habits or changes in in something. Well, it's the end. Uh, well, in simple terms, it's the end of patterns because there isn't anybody in them anymore. Uh, the body um, relaxes completely because there isn't any tension or anxiety. And there's far more energy because the energy isn't expended on maintaining the illusion of me. Uh, Tony, what happens when the body is dying? Uh, let's presume there is a sense of a me there. There's the energy, contracted energy. So the body is dying and therefore to some extent there would be some fear about me dying because me believes it was born will live and die at the point of real death not apparent not near death and any of that nonsense at the point of real death when the brain ceases functioning so does also the sense of separation cease function there's nothing left Like the Dalai Lama come back again and again. The Dalai Lama? Yeah. <laughs> We've just been talking about Rupert Sparrow as well. The Dalai Lama, as far as I'm concerned, is still in the dream of me. And the way he speaks and communicates is clear that he thinks there is a story and, and you know, he's in it and he can help make it better. So the Dalai Lama's got when he dies, well suddenly, when, when the Dalai Lama <laughs> body ceases to function, at the point of death, it will suddenly be recognised there never was a Dalai Lama. You won't tell anybody else that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Tony, the interesting thing is that at the point of real death, well, it's, there, is, uh, there is a recognition, as there is in living liberation, but there never was anybody. But at, but at the point of what we call normal death, when, that, when that's recognised, not by anyone, it's just a recognition, it's too late to tell anybody else. You can't phone back, your know, phone your mother or uh, lover and say, by the way, there isn't anyone. <laughs> but the interesting thing is that even in the living body, when the person dies, they also can't tell anyone. I can't tell you anything. This can't, or this can't tell you anything. All it can do really is deconstruct illusion. After uh, your collapse, well, yeah, right. it's cool, apparently. <laughs> yeah. But uh, your profession changed. Your job, you, you, you well, didn't. Um, do, you didn't do these meetings as you did. It didn't mean anything in, the, in terms of profession. No. In any way, I wouldn't change. There wasn't anyone. So all there is is what's happening. So the, this collapse, the me that collapsed, and the story collapsed. And all that was left was what was happening. Yeah. And whatever. And what happened was yet. job changed. Sorry. And what? No, not really. Um, I was um, with Claire. We were doing publishing. Yeah. And then I I wrote the Open Secret. At that time, and, uh, and then after that, somebody asked me to go and talk, in this little flat in London, with five people. And then it just went like, shh. Okay. But I didn't do any of that. Yeah, but... It's just what happened. Yeah, it's what happened, but... but job changed. Job, Sorry? Job changing... <laughs> job changing happened, or job changing took what, place. So what happened? Job 
job changing. Job change, if you want. In a way. I became a professional guru. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. Sometimes I find it hard to imagine that after the c collapse, like, you know, the, the terminal, the end kind of thing, that uh, people go on doing what they did before. Oh, so I know many people who collapse, okay. you, as you say, who just go on doing what they do. Ah, okay, because then many, I always... Many, many. Okay. Nearly all, actually. Okay. Because I couldn't imagine sort of then everybody becoming a spiritual something, some teacher or whatever, kind of... Well, I think you're talking about a different thing. I'm talking about the, this, not, not about in the normal world, when people believe they've become enlightened or anything like that. They're still in the dream, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there are people who have come to your meetings and now they're doing, they're holding the same meetings as you are, right? They're holding the same, they're never as good as mine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there, there is that communication can go on. I only know three people who. But yeah, okay. And I'm it's, not it's telling you who they are. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> you might go and see them. <laughs> but it's it's not the case that then after every collapse, one has to become. Oh God, no! One has to become Thank one God. of those. Yeah, yeah. I'd be out of a job if they all those. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> and there are people I know who aren't communicating in this way, you know, sitting in front of him, but there are other people who communicate this in a more one-to-one -one personal way, just when it arises. But most of the people uh, are just doing bu driving buses and doing... Well, they're not really driving buses. <laughs> No, they're not doing anything, no. They're not actually doing anything.
Tony. Uh, so if we talk about a before and after and the idea whether anything changes or shifts or not, it's not really whether anything changes or not, it's is it more like the idea that anything can actually change completely collapses? Yeah. Like how can anything change no. when everything no, no. it's already nothing everything can. that no. yeah. Absolutely. And then we're talking about um, science and neuroscience, um, in a way catching up with this message. Sort of vaguely. Uh, sort of ways vaguely. To, yeah. uh, it's still concerned with the idea that the body and the brain are the real thing. Yeah, it's still in the story as far as I'm concerned. Right. Yeah. From your perspective over there, uh, is there a sense of what happens after the physical body ceases to exist? Um, oh, Is that a well, yeah, when the physical body collapses, uh, dies, uh, it, let, presuming that there's a sense of separation in that body up until the point of death, um, then that, that, that sense, sense of separation collapses or dies with the body, with the death of the brain, mm -hmm. apparently. And it was never real, of course, but... So when you say this is it, does, it doesn't necessarily uh, refer to what the brain is capable to Not conceive, to no. construct ideas, the illusions, the stories, no. it's... The brain is only really an organism that functions in the whole. Um, and and the, the collapse of the illusion that there's someone and thereafter they're only being everything in that sense has nothing to do with the brain, the brain. but the brain functions in both of those apparent circumstances you want me to press it or not? yeah, yeah. yes please okay <laughs> so it's, I'm trying to put me words to something so it's like as if nothing is having fun, apparently fun, creating an illusion of something going on and then the human body takes on the idea that it's it doing it. That's that it's the oh, well the me. The me. It, the me is in the illusion of being a doer, yeah. And nothing is really going on. No. Mm. I mean, you know, the whole energy of me is is moving. It's, uh, it becomes. You know, uh, the, um, there's nothing, and then suddenly, the the contraction of energy creates a sense of an identity that is in a moving world. Mm. Uh, things are happening in the world, and it is involved in them. And they are real, and it is real. It's a, it's a complete, it's a complete dream. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a complete dream for the dreamer. Yeah, totally. Of course. Yeah. 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 Without the dreamer. Well, the, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. The point is this: I mean, there is still a geology, there is still a history. There's still. There, without the human being being there. Yes, the human being tells the story of that geology, but there's still a. This, I'm stuck with this happening. Um, nothing happening. There's still an apparent. If you take the, you take the human experience away, the human, the self experience. Yeah. yeah. If you take humans away, yeah. why do I? Um, the human experience is not possible. Depends what you mean by humans. This form that we are exhibiting right now. Well, uh, for me, it would only be the me. That, I mean, I absolutely agree with you. The me is the only thing that thinks it dreams is living in the story. So if you take that away, if you take that away, yeah.
exists without our being there, but it implies change, doesn't it? <coughs> Uh, only in its appearance, yes, so empty fullness, uh, and the fullness appears to have change in it, yeah. Yes, recorded. But it's, but it's only in appearance, yeah. So, yeah. Now, are you okay with that? Oh, oh. <laughs> I might come back, we'll see. Okay. So, in a way, we can say there is a reality and various interpretations of that reality, either by a me or functions of the brain, or going back to what the man here was saying, if you take humans away, then there's a nature that remains. Um, this is what's totally unknowable. What is? Whatever it's left. Whatever it's oh, always there. Whatever, whatever, it's, yeah. That's a complete mystery. Totally. But there, when you say various uh, interpretations, I, as far as I'm concerned, there are only there's only one interpretation, and mm. that is the, the interpretation from the self. The self, the self interprets existence in a certain way. Yeah, but once the uh, me is not there, the brain continues ah. interpreting. But then you know, floor, an... door, opening the door, food. I mean that type of interpretation, so there is a carrying on of functions. When there's no one, there's no interpreter. No. Not consciously, and uh, not making a story oh, of it, right, right. but understanding oh, door, yeah. open door, mm. sound, uh, mm. space, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So in a way, if everything is gone, then it seems that like what would be left would be not knowing, rather than would be nothing. Nothing? Yeah. I mean, not even knowing. Oh, it would actually be nothing. not knowing. Yeah. There's no knowing, no. Yeah. Of course not. That's just... <coughs> There's nothing left. There's nothing. Yeah. yeah. Then there, there is only nothing. I've heard the sentence, um, the most intimate thing is not knowing, but uh, I have the impression there might not uh, be someone who doesn't know. No, this isn't about intimacy. Oh, yeah. No, there isn't any intimacy. I mean, it sounded very uh, spiritual when I heard that. Oh, right. So. Intimacy for me implies something that's closer than close, but that isn't what there is in emptiness, there isn't anything that's close, ah, there, so, so there isn't anything to be close to. Ah, I see, so that seems to be something special that is also achievable in like the, the dream of the me. Maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Hello. 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 Yes. Uh, I'll pass it on to you. Um, so, do you mean to say that whenever something is real, it's only real to me in the sense of I in perceive it? In the dream. It? It's only real in the dream, yeah. In the dream. Um, and anything I perceive in my dream is often, very often driven by emotional aspects and my personal interpretation. Then what's your vision on science and scientific rules and, and proofs, or what we quantify or qualify as proofs for scientific things, or, uh, things we see or things we, well, let's say we, th like, the for example, the rules of gravity, which are, we have basically pretty much all accepted now. What's your vision on that? Simply that that is all a description of an appearance. But is there an, an emotional impact as well? It depends. There can be. Why not? Yeah. Well, not here, but there will be. But for some people, there could be. But but, but the, the the you know scientific discoveries or whatever you like to call them are simply an appearance. In the whole, there is only the appear. There is only what appears. There's nothing that's real. So it's just a different appearance of energy of emptiness 
Absolutely. Emptiness is fullness or everything. Nothing is everything and everything is everything. It's not part of everything. So a scientific discovery that seems to happen in everything is only in appearance. You should get a Nobel Prize soon then, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Scientists can uh, measure the DNA of a dinosaur and say that it's so many millions of old, uh, years old, but the actual dinosaur bone that they're measuring is actually only the appearance of a dinosaur bone. And the measurements that they come up with that they think then is a factual proof of something four million years old is actually only a the appearance of something that seems to be for four million years. Yeah, but we've got a bit further than dinosaur bones. So? We've got a bit further than dinosaur bones now, in the sense of that, that story we've pushed into mm -hmm. the realm now, where simply observing an experiment can change the outcome of that. Oh, yeah, that's also. Now it creates a big problem of consciousness. Yeah. It's sort of where you're coming from because then you're talking about something from nothing. Yeah. Yeah. But the observer, of course, in that experiment is a self. What what um, what is it like the what um, so what's uh, the so what what is me uh, no no uh, what <laughs> what 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 like like what are we what what's going on like you know? no <laughs> well. <laughs> Nothing's going on, nothing at all. <laughs> what is that, the, 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 the me thing? The me thing is simply... The contracted thing, like... It it's just contracted energy. What's that then? It's just apparently contracted energy. It's oneness <laughs> appearing as twoness. Why? Yeah, no, oh! Oh, why? Forget it. That just don't even, don't even, I'm not even going to answer that. Yeah. Why? Who gives a fuck? <laughs> there isn't a why. There's no reason because everything that appears is completely without purpose or meaning. So there's no why. So it's just kind of taking place. It isn't. It only appears to be taking place. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just want to go back to the subject of death of death. the body we were talking about Real earlier. Death, yeah. um, it, the way we were talking about it made it sound as though the body is something real. The oh, body dies, you, but it, not at all. it's the apparent body that dies, right? It's the apparent body that dies and the apparent brain that ceases to function. Yeah. Yes. Nothing is real. So then in apparent death, it's this contracted energy that's then released, or the contracted energy is then released. No more, except that it never was either. Anyway. It never was in no, the first place. Oh. <laughs> I was recently watching a movie in which aliens landed on the Earth. <laughs> 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 and, <laughs> and, and I suddenly wondered, is this something only the me would be fascinated about or would a liberated person make up a plot like this or where does this come from? 
this, this fascination... Well, Lemie would see the aliens as something significant that they could yes. go further their search with through. The, uh, when there's no one, it would, they, the alien would simply be what is. <laughs> But, but would, would a liberated person be... There is no such thing. Yes, I know, but I don't know how to say it. A liberated... <laughs> okay. A, a liberated body? Person, yeah. Would a liberated body or a liberated brain... Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I just noticed since I heard this message, I, I, I lose my interest in, interest in, in novels, which I read a Novels. Lot. Yes, yeah. because it's... A story, and I, I don't find it much anymore. Oh, in stories, yeah. but would 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 a liberated brain also maybe write a novel and just be fascinated? Yeah, maybe. I mean, you know, as far as this is concerned, the stories are still interesting. The stories yes. are what's happening, but there's no um, there's no longer any any sort of identification with the story. But stories are great. I love stories. Mm. Absolutely. Why not? Doctor Who, you know? No, no, come <laughs> <laughs> But absolutely, yeah, what, what the story, I mean, this is a story, isn't it, great? Because, and it's great because it's meaningless. It's not so great when you think it's really important. <laughs> So, um, in some way, is maybe the difference between you and other speakers who, uh, about we were talking before that they still live in dualism. Is it maybe the thing that your glimpse is continued and they are um, is straight, like on and off? Well, it's quite well, from what they talk about. It's quite obvious that this, as far as this is concerned, they're still in the dream of. In the dualistic dream. Sorry, I didn't get The it. teaching is dualistic. It's yeah. about you being a person that can get to somewhere. That's dualism. One, you know, one you getting to somewhere too. One, two, dualism. Yes, but isn't it maybe that they like experience, they experience this glimpse and that's why they... They could have had a glimpse but they're still back in the dream yes. of there being a journey and a person in a journey. They're still... It might have been a glimpse. People do have a glimpse and think. But, they, but basically a glimpse is only that, a glimpse. Nobody has a glimpse actually but a glimpse can happen. And then the me can come out of the other side of that and still teach other people that they are, they, are, they are a person who can be on a journey to somewhere called liberation, let's say. That's dualism. There isn't anywhere to go, there's nothing, there's no journey, there's no one, because all there is is no thing. That's the only, that's the only unadulterated non-dualism there is. Anything else is dualism. So they speak a different language, really. Okay. From a different perception. They have a perception that, that this doesn't. So, <clears throat> the idea of being born implies there is a beginning to something. This is true. Is that an implication completely it's a bit misleading? It's the birth is right? only an appearance. Right. But it is, it is a, it's very convincing when, when self-identity is taken on, then the idea of birth, a story and death is very convincing. So people become convinced that they are real people in a real story. 
and that they can get somewhere with us. Um, sorry, following on that, um, so they want to follow a story or they want to... So a lot of people, I think, um, think that there's a purpose or a reason to be alive or you know, a meaning, a meaning to life. Yeah, people want to find a meaning to life. Are you saying? As well, as yeah. well. Um, but if in non-duality both life and death actually don't exist. Uh, no, it isn't that they don't exist. It is that they are only an appearance. To say they don't exist is not quite the same thing. Life and death, or whatever you like to call it, is only an appearance out yeah. of nothing. Well, it's not out of nothing. It's nothing appearing as that. Um, so, if I ask you um, personally, what, do you feel that there's a, a, a meaning? No, no. 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 There doesn't have to be a meaning as far as this is concerned, because this is complete. Why would it have a meaning or purpose to go somewhere else? Why would it need to change? This is complete. And also, this is complete. Yeah. And this is complete. Alright, then, then if, if I now put it in my personal perspective, this is complete, but if I were to be dead, it would just be as complete oh, of still. Course it would. So what's it's then the, the reason thing. to be is here? Same. This is death. This is death. This is emptiness. But completeness is a... I mean, it's your thought by the use of words, I understand. Yeah, there, I'm is still a, there is still a... Yeah, they can be. Words, words can't express what I'm trying to say. But you're quite right, the word complete doesn't say it. The word, this is fulfilled. It doesn't even say that. I can't say what this is. But I, I can only get as near as possible by saying, why would there be any need for a purpose when this is fulfilled? This is fulfillment. If you like. Yeah. If it's fulfillment, why would it need to go somewhere else to find some more fulfillment? This is fulfillment. This is unconditional love. Why would it need to go anywhere to find more unconditional love? If it's unconditional, why? Would and uh, this is this is complete. This is fulfilled. So why would it need to know itself? It is everything. Why would everything need to know itself? Where would it go? It would have to go somewhere and step outside everything to know everything. That's why the whole idea that you know, awareness is everything is just nonsense. It's just throughout this meeting and you know things I saw on YouTube and all kinds of different things I've read, the more I hear or see or you know um, um, experience, let's call it that way, about this topic, which is not a topic, right. but anyway, um, the more I am inclined to ask myself questions like, okay, so why am I even still going to work if this is just as perfect? Why am I even, you know, okay, and that extrapolates on, until the question, okay, why, yeah. So what you're doing is turning the, the suggestion that there's no meaning or purpose into a story. Without Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, so does that then mean that basically you're writing a story but missing one component to make it what people call a normal story because you normal, normally a story goes somewhere? Oh yeah, in the normal world, what we call the normal world, the world of the self, the dualistic world, the story seems to go somewhere. What's being suggested here, there isn't a story. But the story is in appearance and isn't going anywhere. That's all. I'm going to think about that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so we talked about all these amazing things. You can't get this right or wrong. You can't do this. It can't be done. It just is already. So there's no way to go, nothing to do. Because already what you long for is what is. It's right there. It's in everything. You can't miss it. It's the perfect lover. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>